Hi, everybody. <clears throat> hello, hello. Happy Monday. Uh, my name is Darlene. I am with Feather Ray Doctor in beautiful North Idaho, very close to the Canadian border. Um, it is Monday. This is my Ask the Doctor show where I answer viewer questions. And tonight's topic is going to be the quarter inch seam allowance and how to find the perfect one on your featherweight. It's probably been a year since I've talked about this, so this might be a good little refresher course for you. I'm going to pull up my feeds here. I'm going to say hi to just a few friends, and then we're going to get going. Um, so I have been a quilter for about 26 years, and I didn't realize that there was kind of a stigma with the featherweight and the quarter inch foot. Um, what started the whole conversation was on Friday during my sip and sew, we were talking as an online community about things that were kind of difficult concepts for us to grab when, when we were first brand new quilters and the quarter inch seam allowance debate came up. And so, you know, a lot of the modern machines have like special gadgets or needle placements because the shaft is not fixed like the featherweight you can move it closer or further away and things are a little bit different here when it comes to the featherweight because you have a fixed shaft and the feet that came with your machine are not are not it's a four millimeter foot for doing with a french hem not a quarter inch foot for using for piecing for quilting so it's a little confusing and i kind of understand like where that comes from now but i didn't understand it back in the day when I was a brand new baby quilter 26 years ago. So I thought we'd talk about it a little bit tonight. Um, did everybody have a good weekend? I had a, I had a nice weekend. I uh, took Sunday off and we, I clean the house. I like cleaning my house. It's very satisfying. <laughs> did some grocery shopping. Uh, went down to Coeur d'Alene for some raw materials for a big quilt order I had. So I ran errands and it was just kind of a low key, a low key day. Um, uh, how about you guys? What what was your big weekend plans? Let's see here. Sorry, guys. I am trying to pull up my feed. Sorry, I should have done this before I jumped on, but I ran out of time. <laughs> what else is new? All right, lives, lives. In progress with Darlene and then let me go here okay okay let's see here all right let's see who's on Polly is on in the UK hi sweetheart Darla K we Paget. hey I keep missing this my set my alarm today well Darla you made it I'm glad you're here girl Christine is on Karen's on um, from Cali. Karen, are you drying now or are you still getting soaked? Uh, Polly says, good old Matrix over Imperial or vice versa. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Who do we have here? Um, Kathy's on from East Texas. Debbie Ellen Sinclair's on from Kentucky. Hi, sweetheart. Um, Pauline's on. Don, Odie, Nancy from Lake Stevens. Julie Campbell's on from... Um, <laughs> from Tennessee, Julie Campbell says, for some reason, the booby TV, I don't know what the booby TV has you set for 8 p.m. I don't, I, I'm four here. Four, that would not put you in the, in this country. <laughs> John Williams, Fran's on from Indiana. Hi. And Sandy Reese is on from Massachusetts. Oh, good. Char is on from Australia. Let's see here. <laughs> Darlis, it looks like she's been cleaning out her uh, Tupperware style cabinet drawer. I'm assuming of sewing supplies. Um, oh, good. Karen says California is drying out today. That's good. <gasps> Kathleen Sheffield is on from Montana. Hi, friend. I miss you. Carrie's on from Houston, uh, formerly of Germany. Welcome, welcome. Linda's on uh, from Tennessee. All right, friends. So, on. First of all, if you missed the Friday night sip and sew, kind of encourage you to go back and watch it. Evil Twin Denise was on and we were having some fun. That's all I'm going to say. Hi, Karen Lewis Parker from Stephenville, Texas. Thanks for saying hi. Um, so we were having some fun and during the, um, the live, 
uh, where there was zero, zero sewing done. It was all sipping. Uh, we, oh, Sam Angelo, I'm sorry. I thought you were in Houston, Carrie. I'm sorry. Uh, I thought we were, um, we started talking about things that were kind of aha, not to quote um, Curse of Oak Island show, aha moments when it came to quilting for us. And one of the things that was brought up was the whole importance of the quarter inch seam allowance. Um, we are going to, that's going to be an ongoing topic actually for the next little bit, just because I feel like it's a really good conversation. And there are a lot of people on here. Oh my gosh, Carrie. Uh, there's a lot of people on here that are new to, to quilting, never mind new to featherweights. And it's good, it's good to have these conversations. Um, so I thought we would talk a little bit about finding your quarter inch seam allowance on the featherweight. I would like to just say that I didn't realize there was such a stigma with this. I think it's because I just have been using my feather weights for about 16 years. And it's hard to remember back when <clears throat> I was new to quilting and, and, you know, all of the things that kind of made it go smoothly. So hello, Susan from Ohio. Oh, is it Sue? Sue, as in Kathy's friend, Sue? I think that's your last name. Hi, Judy from Kansas. Thanks for saying hey. So the first thing you're going to need to find a good seam allowance is your blue painter's tape. I have a couple other little tools here. This is like my favorite tool for finding your seam allowance. It's the Sew Standard Seam Guide. We have a few of these left in the store. Um, what I like about it is if you are doing different projects, there are little tick marks for the different sized seam allowances. And I feel like this is an invaluable tool for finding your quarter inch seam allowance. Hello, Molly from Spokane. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna, well, first thing I'm gonna do is hit my secondary camera and do that. Okay, so here's, I have Morticia out, my 1941 black side. I have removed the presser foot. Let me put that back on actually. So your first and foremost, your first tool is going to be your quarter inch foot. So this is my favorite one. It has a quarter inch from either side of the foot and your needle goes through the middle of the foot. So that way, if you're ever, oopsie, <laughs> oops, I hit the little clamp deal. If you're ever doing um, like a, a project where you have your jockeying either side of a drawn line for your quarter inch seam allowance. This foot is invaluable because you don't, you don't have to flip your project around 180 degrees. You can just sew on either side of the drawn line. So we're going to put this back on a quarter inch foot. First and foremost is key. It's key. So I'm going to put this back on here and then I'm going to use my little seam, my seam guide. Um, and I'm going to find the quarter inch mark on it right here. And I'm gonna come underneath the foot here and I'm gonna put my needle, rolling the needle forward through that quarter inch uh, hole in the ruler. And now, as you can see here, I have a nice hard line. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my blue painter's tape and I'm going to grab about maybe two inches because I, I don't want to, you don't get carried away with the painter's tape on the bed of the machine. First of all, you have foil decal here in the middle and you have foil here in front and you don't want to put your blue painter's tape over a uh, foil decal because it could pull your foil decal off. So I'm just pulling about two inches off and all I'm going to do is I'm going to set this right alongside of the ruler Make sure I do it straight. <laughs> Sometimes that's easier than it sounds um, or harder than it sounds. And then I'm going to set this right up here like this. Okay, so in most quilting scenarios, this should be sufficient. So I'm going to roll my thing up. And now when I put my presser foot down, I have the edge of my foot and the blue painter's tape as a guide. Okay, the next thing for those of you that need a little bit more is there are these metallic seam guide deals. And I think you've probably heard me talk about how I don't care for anything that actually straps to the bed of the machine through the screw holes on the bed of the machine because inevitably they'll, they'll slip out and scratch. Um, and so this, what I like about this is it's magnetic and I can put it on top of 
my painter's tape, so therefore I'm not scratching anything. And now I have a full curb as well as my paint, my paint tape guide to be able to sew up against. So this is how I have a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. <gasps> Hi, Deanna Hamilton. So those little tools right there make life so much easier. And then when you're doing, you know, your, your fabric placement, you just can run this right up against the foot, right up against your, your magnetic plate, and then you are set. That's okay, Dan, if you're late to the party, better late than never. All right, Donnie Williams says, I use a blue purple, or a, I'm sorry, a purple lavender version that is less sticky, but it also works. Hi, Deanne Hartman. Uh, for sewing sessions, you get it at Home Depot. Nice. Molly in uh, Spokane Valley says, my Foster's finish is poor. I only use tape on the chrome. Yeah, because it will probably just pull more of the finish off if you put it, uh, you know, too far onto the black. Thanks, Ray. For the links, hi, Karen in Ohio. Thanks for saying hey. All right. Well, that was kind of all I had scheduled to discuss this evening. Um, I will be back on Wednesday. We are going to do a um, work in progress Wednesday. So send pictures, send pictures in advance. Everybody waits till I get on air and then my inbox starts getting flooded. It also works, but send it in advance to info, I-N-F-O at featherweightdoctor.com. And that way I can make sure that your pictures are included in the show. You also can DM me on any of the social media platforms. Um, and then we can celebrate as, an, as a community what each other's successes are. Because I think that is always very, very, very rewarding for me. Sandy Reese says, what do you have for the 301? So for the 301, I do have quarter inch feet. Um, and actually all of the stuff that I just showed on camera can also work for the, the finding the, the true quarter inch seam allowance on the 301. Uh, the 301 quarter inch feet should be on the website. Hi, Mel. Thanks for saying hey. Oh, Elizabeth Scott from Bonnie Lake is on. Hi, Elizabeth. I know Sue and I know Kathy. <laughs> oh, well, you're Northwest Ohio. Okay, so you're, so you're Susan, you're another Sue. Got it. <laughs> those are my girls. They came out for quilt camp. So for those of you watching from Phoenix, Arizona, I do have just a few more seats left in my workshop at Modern Quilting the first week of February. I think it's Thursday that week. So you can contact Modern through the website or call the store to be able to register for the website or for the workshops. Um, oh, okay. Molly says, send me good Quilty Juju for tomorrow. I am long army again. It has been since November. Hope I can remember the important things. You can do it, girl. I know it. I just know it. Hi, Nancy. All right, friends. That was kind of all I had for you tonight. I appreciate everybody saying hi, and I appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, I'll be back here. Oh, hi, Kathy Zoka. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back here on four o'clock Pacific on Wednesday for the work in progress show. Send your pictures over. Let's, let's ooh and awe ah about them. Hello, Kelsey Bakeman. My featherweight seems to pull the fabric to the left. Hmm. Is your, this knob right here. Yeah, you can see it. This knob right here. Is it tight? Cause if this is too loose or too tight, it will kind of make your fabric not feed exactly evenly. Also, your is your foot kind of askew? Because if you make sure your foot is straight, it might feed a little bit more evenly too. Oh, you are quilting a king size quilt, Molly, tomorrow? Yikes, that sounds like a big job. <laughs> All right, friends. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you at 4 o'clock Pacific right here on Facebook and YouTube on Wednesday.